Okay, we're ready to start the last session. If I could ask people to make your way to your seats, please. Thank you. So this brings us to the last session of the day. I'll have two contributed talks followed by a panel discussion. Uh, the first contributed talk is Global to Local Memory Pointer Networks for Task-Oriented Dialogue by Chen Sheng Wu, Kaiming Shang, and Richard Socher. Uh, and the talk will be given by Chen Shen Sheng Wu. Excuse me. Uh, thank you, Jason, for introduction. I'm also called Jason, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so uh, hello everyone. I'm Jason from uh, HKUSD, and this work is joint work with uh, when I was an intern at Salesforce Research. And thanks to two of my co amazing co authors, Chai Ming and Richard. And today I'm going to talk about an end to end approach for task oriented dialogue. We propose a new pointer network we call Global to Local Memory Pointer Networks. So, very short recap different from chit chat dialogue, uh, task oriented dialogue is usually have a specific goal that system want to achieve. For example, restaurant reservation or uh, navigation something, some places. And usually they want to achieve their goal based on minimum of dialogue turn to be more efficient. And there are many different of intention in this work, uh, but usually it's like you need to, uh, based on user's intention and uh, uh, something to generate a system response. So here are example between a system and a user. Let's check together. Good morning. Uh, Hello, what can I help you today? Can you find me a pizza restaurant? So right now a user may be hungry and find some, want to find something to eat. And before a system reply, you first need to check. It's knowledge based what kind of uh, item match what system wanted. For example, it replied, there are two nearby, round table and dominoes, which one do you like? Then the user can say, oh, the closest one, or I don't like dominoes. So what the system should reply next is our challenge. So our main problem here is natural and natural understanding, and dialogue management. Also, the understanding and reasoning over knowledge base is important. Finally, we need to generate the system response. Okay, so end-to-end -end approach, there's some advantage, but there's some new challenge uh, ahead of us. The input of a system are plain text of dialogue history and knowledge bases. And we expect the output directly generated was the response with real slot values. An advantage here is we don't need labels for belief states, slots, uh, dialogue action, and intention. We only need plain text. And also free from learning the dependency between each modules. But new challenge here is, if you want to incorporate KB, usually are large and dynamic into a machine learning system, how can we uh, incorporate it effectively? Second, can we achieve some way to interpret the dialogue system, end-to-end -end dialogue system, like traditional belief state tracking or slot filling? And do we have enough data set to train end-to-end -end model? So thanks to the, this deep copy in the morning session to help me cover some related works. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, and also let us know how important copy is. Okay, so in our model, Global to Local Memory Pointer Network, GLMP, we have three components. One, global memory encoders, encode dialogue history. And this two in, uh, encoder result will pass to another two modules. In external dial uh, knowledge encoder encode dialogue his uh, knowledge graph and also the dialogue history. And while we decoding, the local memory decoder were interactive with external knowledge and then generate final system response. For example, round table is four miles away at some address. So let's dive in deeper into each component. The first one is external knowledge. Here, we use an uh, end to end memory network to represent our external knowledge. Uh, as a short recap, enter memory network usually have a query vector Q and a set of trainable embedding, the blue and green box here. And each time step, Q will do inner product over all the entity uh, memory slots and then to perform softmax to get a memory attention. Then, weighted sum over memory as the readout. 
This process can do multiple times. Usually, they call multiple hop reasonings. And in this case, uh, in, in our external knowledge, we have KB memory and dialog memory, which their input are the RDF triplet format. For example, uh, subject, predicate, object, like Tom's house, distance, three miles, Tom's house, traffic, heavy, and so on. So we have a lot of nodes in our external knowledge. What's that for? We use these nodes for copying. So the key of our copyability is in the last hop of memory networks. This memory attention weight will help us perform copyabilities. For example, if lit's nodes are pointed to Tom's house, distance three miles, we copy these three miles to our response. And our global memory encoder has a context RNN encode plain text style history. And here, another key point here is we write its hidden states into the external knowledge. Why we want to do this? Because two reasons. First one is writing the contextual dial history into external knowledge can help us generate a, a better mini representation for each memory slots. And also, when we encounter some out of vocabulary problem, even if it is OOV words, we still got a meaningful rep representation based on the context words. And also, after uh, the, the input to the external knowledge, external knowledge will return a vector back, which is called global memory pointer G. Global memory pointer G is a vector that points to all the words that may appear in the next system response. For example, in this case, the user say, find me gas stations. So what may appear in the next response it could be gas station, or Valero, or Valero address, and so on. So all these entities are important in system response. So instead of doing softmax in the last layer of memory network, we perform sigmoid function independently for each slot, uh, each memory slot. So in this way, G help us to converge our external knowledge. Then our local memory pointer have us uh, instead of directly generate final response, we have the sketch RNN first generate sketch response. It's a response with unfilled slots. For example, POI is distant away. We don't have real uh, sub values inside. And based on its hidden states and global memory pointer, we then query external knowledge again, which is shared between the encoders, to get the vector back we call local memory pointer, which point to one entity word at each time step only. So after this L, uh, we can get this entity to fill in these slots. We also have a record function to, uh, to, to keep uh, recording like what kind of nodes already be copied. If it's a copy, then we remove it from our knowledge graph. So let me show you a general workflow of GeoMP system. For example, right now we are going to generate Valero is three miles away, this sentence. How did it work? First, we use the context RN to encode all the dialogue history, and then we use its hidden state to query the external knowledge and also write the hidden state into the dialogue memory. Then the memory will uh, uh, return a global memory pointer G. Then we can start to decode. If at this time step, an unfilled slot is generated, then we use its hidden states to query again the external knowledge. And then based on the global memory pointer G and the query vector, we can get a local memory pointer L, which point to Valero. We keep moving on. If a word, normal vocabulary word is generated, is, then we don't need to query at all. Again, distance, we query again. Get another local memory pointer point to three miles, another entity nodes in external knowledge. So at the end, we got Valero is three miles away. So our experiment are doing two data set. The first one is baby dialogue data set, which is a simulated data set, and, but it includes some out of vocabulary uh, difficult settings. We evaluate metric of this data set is per response accuracy and per dialogue accuracy. We also try on a difficult data set, which is called Stanford multi-domain data set. It's a human-human data set over car systems. We have three domains, calendar, weather, and navigation. And we evaluate this system, uh, the system based on blue score entity F1 score, and also we perform human evaluation. The training objective of our system is sum of three laws. The first one is binary cross entropy laws for global memory pointer, and also we have two cross entropy laws for sketch RNN and local memory pointer respectively. Some training details here, we use only use grid decoding. We do hyperparameter grid search over hidden side hops and dropout ratio. 
atom optimizer, and in this case, we didn't use any pre-trained embeddings. So show some of our baseline. We try end-to-end -end memory network, query reduction networks, gate memory networks, also standard SEC-to-SEC -SEC network with long attention, and previous pointer network, and also previous still VR man to sec network. So let's look at baby dialog first. So you can see, like, in general, our model GLMP system, no matter k hop equal to one or three or six, we perform generally better than previous work. And we can also find, like, in this case, a generation method work better than retrieval method. And also, with copyability, especially in out of a cavity setting, work much more better than without copyability models. Also, in Stanford multi-domain data set, uh, uh, although we didn't get a big improvement in blue score, but usually uh, people found like even human cannot get a high blue score in these cases. But in entity F1 score, we can observe uh, we have a big improvement from 30 something to 50 something and they have one score improvement it's because of usage of our global memory pointer and our we also perform human evaluation which is consists of our uh, unsupervised metric finding but still there is a gap between our model and human performance in these cases we also did some our ablation studies that is we remove contextual dialogue history we remove edge and also we remove our global memory pointer remove g in baby dialog out of vocabulary setting, we found like if we remove edge, we will get like five to 14% performance drop in these cases. And in SME data set, if we remove G, we will get 11.5 uh, entity F1 score drop. Okay, let's go through some qualitative study. So this is the visualization of our pointing ability. In the left column, this is the entity nodes that we put in our uh, external knowledge. So in the last uh, sentence, the user say, give me direction to the closest grocery store. And the goal response is, we are three miles away from Willow's Market, but there is a car collision nearby. Our sketch response is, the nearest POI type is POI, comma, distant away at address. So how can we fill in this uh, unfilled slots? First, we can look at our global memory pointer G, as we expect. It points to multiple nodes that it thinks is important for decoding. And in the right column, this is our final pointer work. So you can see the nail list in time two, it points to grocery store. Is in time four, point to Willow's Market. Comma, three miles away at, and in time nine, point to address. Okay, so now you know how we call the pointer uh, point to the position and we copy the word out. And in the middle column, this is the memory attention without weighted by global memory pointer. You can see in time step nine, uh, our memory attend to multiple address, but not sure which one is correct. The one is uh, have higher probability is um, address of Panda Express, but which is the wrong entity. So after weighted by the global memory pointer G, we can get the correct one. Finally, we also did some error analysis in these two data set. We found like in baby data set, our mi many mistakes are uh, in happened in uh, text three, which is recommend restaurants. We found we keep recommend same restaurant with high score, but maybe already rejected by the users. And in SME data set, there are two main mistakes we, like we mostly encountered. The first one is KB understanding problem. That is, if we have multiple entities, uh, in multiple matches in KB, sometimes our model cannot recognize. Also, there's a problem called copy mismatch. I Means sometimes we generate a tag is address tag, but instead, we address tag after query external knowledge, we got four miles away back. So it's a distant tag. So here are the example. In the left part, in this case, we have two doctor appointment in our memory. The gold response is, are you talking about a doctor appointment on Wednesday or the one on the 5th? But our response is, your doctor appointment is on the 5th at 6 p.m. with Alex. Very like, certain, but it's not correct because usually they have need to check which doctor appointment the user is talking about. And also in the right part, you can see uh, at the last time step, our gen sketch generation is address, but the entity we copy is five miles. So the final response we generate is four miles away at five miles. 
So it doesn't make any sense in these cases. So we also provide many other uh, visualization in our main paper. So if you want more information, you can check there. And this is all for my presentation. Thank you. Super, thank you. Well, you did brilliantly on time. Uh, we have uh, time for, for a few questions. Hi, thanks for the talk. Um, I'm just wondering, how big is the knowledge base that you're using there, and how do you think this would scale up to something the size of Wikipedia or something like that? Okay, so uh, the knowledge base in this two data set is uh, in baby da data set is very small. It's around like uh, at most three to five restaurant. And but in SMB data set, it can be have uh, like 100 to 500 nodes in our case. Yeah, so it could be, I don't know if this is big or I enough or not, but it's kind of difficult in our text already. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, really enjoyed the uh, description of global and local pointers makes a lot of sense. Uh, my question is, um, because in end-to-end -end dialogue systems, we are usually given just the dialogue and we have to induce uh, the, out, uh, the next output. In this case, you are creating these templates or sketches as you call them. So this is a representation language that you have to additionally define in the middle, right? Is that correct? That you have to additionally define that representation? And if so, um, uh, how do you know which entities to copy for a particular uh, point of interest, for example? So, uh, because they are point of interest, there may be other ratings, there may be other things. So, do you have uh, sort of entity types for every uh, entity that you know that if the system has generated POI, then you can only copy uh, these kinds of entities? So, how do you give that information? Okay, thank you. So, for uh, first question, how do I generate sketch response? So, uh, for for these two data set, I just based on the provided entity uh, entity table to remove the slot the slot value real slot value to replace with type val type uh, embeddings. But even after this, we do roughly only we we still have uh, over five k possible candidate response. So that's why we instead of doing retrieval, we do generation because it's very noisy. The sketch response is very noisy. So we if if we do generation and it, we can get better performance in these cases. Okay, and second question is, uh, is there any type information in our KB? So you can see, uh, in this case, how do we represent the KB nodes? It's Tom house, distance, three miles. So three miles, this node. If you want to copy three miles, this node, in no three miles is the distance by Tom house. Yeah, so I'm not sure this answer your question or not, yeah. We have time for one more question, if there is one. Uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, is the type of the like KG, uh, KB entity encoded in the representation? Sorry, again? Okay. Is the type of the, uh, so in the triple you have, uh, so three miles is the distance type. Yeah. So do you specifically encode the type of the entity? In when you embed the... No, so how do I represent each node yeah. is I have, uh, so for example, Tom house, distance three miles, I have I have a lot of in, in each embedding for each word, right? And I just sum them to represent this node. So do you think adding additional information about the type, like three miles is the oh. distance type, or would that help? Uh, I haven't tried it, but maybe it helps. But I consider the distance, this vector, already have this kind of information inside. Yes, okay. thank you. Okay, could we thank the speaker again? <laughs>